name is Tom Kingsbury, and I'm a volunteer Adventist World Radio ambassador for the Arizona Area Conference. And it's such a privilege to be here with you yet again here in Sierra Vista. It's such a pleasure. And it's also the pleasure to share what God is doing around the world. I believe that God is doing a, has wonderful plans for AWR in 2023. And I also believe that a huge revival is planned for people's hearts all over this planet. Do you agree? Oh, isn't it beautiful? My hope for today is that each of us is convicted that time is short and that Jesus' power can transform any willing heart. That's what we want is transformation. Thank you for your kind invitation. But before I begin this message and I share these amazing stories of what God is doing through AWR and other ministries around the world, I want to be emphatic that Jesus must be given all the praise, honor, and glory for anything that we represent. Amen. Let us enter into this service with humility and reverence and prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we invite your spirit. We thank you for being here. Rebuke the evil one and keep him far away, far away from each and every person and family represented here, we pray in the holy and precious name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. Romans 12, verse 2, and it promises, once again, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Only Christ can give you true meaning and purpose. Living out God's will for your life, that's where true happiness is, my friends. And I can personally uh, uh, <clears throat> give my personal testimony to that. Being with Adventist Radio for almost six years now, I have witnessed many miracles happening throughout this ministry with literally tens of thousands of baptisms around the world, around this globe. It doesn't matter what country or what culture you come from or live in. God's truth resonates in the human heart. You may be surprised what God is doing and he's using AWR to do in these various areas. It's to transform military generals, diplomats, assassins, witches, drug lords, and even Hollywood. I will be sharing current day miracle stories about the most closed off minds being completely transformed by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is preparing his people for his soon return. God is doing something spectacular through AWR with reaching the masses throughout the airwaves. These radio towers, they represent what we do. It's our primary mission. This includes more than 1,800. Yes, that's 1,800 of our radio stations worldwide. Our shortwave radio towers on the island of Guam reaches more than one third of the world's population, including the 1040 window, which you will be hearing some of these stories very soon today. AWR is the forerunner of cell phone evangelism, where literally hundreds and thousands of people receive Bible studies and sermons every day in their own language through the WhatsApp messaging. Today, we are also much more than just radio, though. Remember that in many countries, radio is valued as the primary source of information and education and entertainment. AWR has podcasts and social media outreach, outreach like never before with views in the tens of millions. And I just bring this little God pod for people that may or may not have seen these before. It's about the size of a garage door opener. And these God pods are just, they're finding, what should I say? 
These are for primarily for people that are beyond the radio where they can't read or maybe they can't read or uh, they are visually impaired. These are beautiful little units and uh, we'll talk about them in a little while. Since 2019, God continues to spotlight his mir miraculous AWR stories in Hollywood. Jesus wants every soul, does he not? Amen. AWR goes up against many Hollywood pictures and God is sharing his mighty power by capturing the attention of these new worldly audiences. AWR miracle stories have won more than 18 telly awards including the People's Choice Award for our film, and this is the one, it's called The Executioner. That means the people of America voted and chose a God story filled with hope and transformation over many other applicants. Amen. It's not about the trophies, though. It's about the people. During the pandemic lockdown in 2020, AWR took a risk and did something unique. We launched several Bible evangelistic series, including Unlocking Bible Prophecies and Earth's Final Countdown. And I bring this this morning to donate to your church. This is the series Earth's Final Countdown. I know that you already have um, Unlocking Bible Prophecies, but once again, 15 DVDs with uh, God's messages right there for your library to hand out, to ha use it any way you want. And also miracle stories, once again, available. This is again, available for people that want to, want, uh, to have that um, and play on their, uh, on their home and home entertainment system. Many TV and radio stu uh, studios, digital missionaries and overseas trans translators joined our humble efforts for this, this series, Unlocking Bible Prophecies and also Earth's Final Countdown. God superseded our expectations. The AWR team was excited. They were shocked and thrilled with the first one million viewers. But guess what? Guess what? But God had a much bigger plans. There are now well over 20 million views on social media in over 30 countries or 30 languages with many more in production. Also in a, on a other YouTube channels, there is an additional 10 million views in Russian and almost 5 million views in Ukrainian. During this time of war, people want to hear hope. They want to hear God's message. Pray that God's truth of salvation reaches them in time. Next, let's watch this exciting video report of some of the projects that have been taking place in 2022. Adventist World Radio goes wherever air goes. When the world shuts down, AWR shows up. Amid Ukraine's blazing bombs and military tanks, AWR 360 has committed $1 million to rig up a semi-trailer truck equipped with solar power God pods, mobile medical equipment, evangelistic outreach tools, and AWR radio programs airing directly from our truck. Where hope is needed, God makes a way for AWR 360 to serve. God cares about the three Muslim men in Uganda that walked from their mosque into our radio station seeking baptism after watching our series Unlocking Bible Prophecies. God cares for the dozens of witches throughout Madagascar that have given up worshiping the dead and now serve the living God. God cares about the people in the marketplace of Ghana. AWR rented loudspeakers proclaiming the three angels' messages among the fruits and vegetables. And recently, 10,000 were converted. Outside Bogota, Colombia, God stretched our airwaves beyond expected capacity. Within weeks, our new radio station surprisingly reached into the capital city. So far, 240,000 people have contacted us with 37,000 requests for Bible studies. Over the 52 years of ministry, 
God has blessed AWR. We now have more than 1,800 AM FM radio stations, along with our shortwave towers in Guam, broadcasting that Jesus is coming soon. AWR 360 follows up with our listeners who need a community of Bible believers and prayer warriors. When prayer goes up, power comes down. We established a center for digital evangelism, a contact center near Manila. Our trained missionaries are available to communicate in 20 languages. Last year, they answered more than 100,000 messages. Praise God! AWR 360's cell phone evangelism continues to explode across continents with training in the tens of thousands. Friends, here is a rare and beautiful testimony. A Tibetan monk listened to AWR. He had a deep desire to share about a creator and savior who personally loves him. After being baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church, he is now recording the Unlocking Bible Prophecy series. God cares that his truth is in the Tibetan language. In the Philippines, 30 assassins dared not get married because they all had warrants out for their arrests. AWR showed up and God stopped the war between the New People's Army rebels and the government military. Now fully pardoned, these former rebels are getting married, being baptized, building churches, giving Bible studies, and preaching their own evangelistic series. Like Rose, we can't show you her face, but as a former NPA general, she would recruit assassins amongst the jungle villages. Recently, she returned and instead preached her first evangelistic series. This is the full circle of AWR 360. We are also assisting these industrious people in starting small businesses to become self-supporting and integrate into society. Something very good is coming out of Nazareth. AWR dedicated our new evangelistic center and radio station in Israel, headed by Pastor Wisam Ali, who joined our president, Dwayne McKee, in baptizing several Arabs in the Jordan River including the translator of his series, Earth's Final Countdown. God's secret agents are risking their lives, like our little lady who carries a camouflage load of radio God pods across mountain ridges into a closed country. Another faithful woman sneaks into her closet every night for the last 18 years to broadcast, beaming a light while hidden in the dark. In many of the Stan countries, our solar power god pods in their local languages are crossing borders. Miracle after miracle, anonymously, in the middle of this dying world's chaos. Whether through the airwaves or boots on the ground, God has AWR show up. If you feel impressed to give, there are several options. One, mark your envelope with AWR so that these funds go directly to Adventist World Radio. Two, you can also easily donate online at awr.org. And three, select Adventist World Radio on the Adventist Giving website or app. Whatever amount you give goes to the front lines and supports work of winning souls all around the world. From broadcast to baptism, this is AWR. 360. Amen. And I also want to mention that we have many companion um, ministries. And uh, last week we had Lonnie Malashenko from the uh, Voice of Prophecy uh, in attendance. And I was so glad he was there. I wanted to be sure and, and mention that we work together because we are all on the same team. Amen. And that is why I love sharing these shocking testimonies. The most powerful witness is a Christian who has been transformed by Jesus. God inspires us through the most unlikely people who give up their old way of life to accept Jesus and the Adventist message. 
For more stories like these, feel free to don uh, download our free AWR 360 app. Remember, 360 is from broadcast to baptism, the entire spectrum. A couple of years ago, AWR filmed a miracle of Abraham. Some of you remember him. He was a Maasai chief who decided to pay tithe by offering his cows and how God multiplied his herd. He had multiplied it dramatically and continues to do so even today. Well, here is another story that makes me smile. From cows to chickens. God sure does have a sense of humor. A chicken farmer on the island of Mindoro in the Philippines was having trouble with his chickens. They just weren't laying eggs. Someone suggested he contact a chicken expert and ask for an evaluation of his hens. <laughs> After examining each of the birds in their environment, the poultry specialist concluded that the chickens were stressed. Really? He advised the farmer to buy some radios and place them around the chicken cages, assuring him that music would help the hens lay more eggs. So the farmer did just that. He tuned the radio to a local station and waited to see what would happen. It was a disaster, you see, because the rock music stressed the chickens even more, and they stopped laying altogether. When he went back to the pullet professional, the man suggested the farmer find a different station with calmer music. So the farmer began searching for a different station. As he turned the dial, he came upon our AWR station and liked what he heard. So he decided to try it. In no time, the chickens, the hens, started laying eggs again. He was very happy with the result, but when our radio station began, airing the Unlocking Bible Prophecy series with Cami Utman, there, so there was less music. But the chickens doubled their production. They seemed to enjoy Cami's soothing voice. To this day, they continue listening with their egg production uninterrupted. That in itself was a miracle, but the real miracle came afterwards. You see, not only were the chickens listening, but the farmer was listening as well. God was working on him in his heart and he was convicted of the truth. Next, he called our radio station for Bible studies. He attended church with his daughter and was baptized in the Seventh-day Adventist church in Mentoro. Isn't that beautiful? Friends, nothing compares to seeing the joy and the hope in the eyes of a new believer People's salvation, their eternal lives matter more than anything else in the world. Together, let's watch the incredible impact of one couple listening to AWR back in Madagascar. With biodiversity beyond compare, this island country is sometimes referred to as the eighth continent of the world. Hi, I'm Cam Utman, and we are in Madagascar. This is AWR 360. Madagascar was first colonized by settlers from Borneo, creating an intriguing mix of both African and Asian cultures. Rice fields are bordered by mud huts and dry plateaus merge into lush green rainforests. Today, I am traveling with Ray Allen and the local AWR workers to the remote village of Sadabi. As we bounce along the pothole-filled roads, the scenery changes. Mountains appear and long stretches of jungle lay between the little mud huts. After several hours of driving, we arrive in Sadabi and are greeted warmly by the villagers. Many children were astonished by my blonde hair as they rarely see foreign visitors. Together we prayed for the village and its wonderful people and thanked God for the miracles that have happened here. Then we met Richard and Boodoo. Their story began many years ago. However, it is still being written today. My wife and I first heard the AWR program many years ago. We were hungry for truth. 
and convicted by what we heard, we believed and wanted to be baptized. They threw away their idols, even though the neighbors warned them that they would surely die because their new religion could not protect them like the idols could. Richard and Boodoo wrote a letter to our AWR station explaining that they had been listening to the programs every day and wanted to be baptized. In the letter, they also offered to give land for a church to be built. Their requests were sent to the nearest pastor to them, but Richard and Boodoo lived so far away that it took quite some time to find their village. When the pastor finally arrived, they had already shared God's truth they had learned with others. Six more were ready to join them in baptism. After they were baptized, Richard and Boodoo began to build a church on the land they donated. With the help of their new small congregation, it was soon complete. With fresh zeal, they shared with their neighbors and friends about their new beliefs, inviting them to listen to the AWR program. Soon their numbers grew and 40 people were meeting together every Sabbath for church. The first church we built was soon too full and we eventually built two more. Now all three are full and we praise the Lord. Demon possession is a real and frequent occurrence here among the Malagasy, and something Richard and Boodoo's church has become known for is their ability to cast out demons. It is traditionally believed that having your own sorcerer is necessary for protection and to keep oneself healthy. Sadly, most people living here, even the Christians, are trapped in this mindset. Word quickly spread about Richard and Voodoo's church casting out demons and people would come to watch. One young man named Patrick came to the church with demon possession. He was 30 years old and had been made deaf and dumb by evil spirits. His family had tried to free him and spent lots of money taking him to different witch doctors and even another Protestant church pastor, but nothing had worked. The other pastor, who was unsuccessful to cast out devils, stated that Patrick's demons were too strong, declaring that only a church that serves a more powerful God can free him. This is when Patrick's family heard about Richard and Boodoo's church, and in desperation, they brought him. Word spread far and wide that this church would cast out Patrick's demons. Interested spectators began flocking. Patrick was brought to the front of the church, he was weak from the demon power and lay limp. They had already begun fasting for his healing and now gathered around him for prayer. For five long hours, Richard and Boodoo, with their dedicated congregation, pleaded with God for deliverance. Suddenly, Patrick stood up. His limp body was strong again. He walked to the pulpit, took the microphone, speaking for the first time in years gave glory to God. Amen. At this miraculous display of God's power, the whole village shouted, He is healed! Hallelujah! Patrick currently lives far away from Richard and Boodoo's church, but they gave him a solar radio. The broadcast continued to encourage him, strengthening his faith and his relationship with God. Not only has the radio blessed our lives, but so many others as well. We are so thankful for the work of AWR. When you give to Adventist World Radio, it really is a ripple effect. Yes. In this story alone, one couple listens and in turn, three churches are born. Wow. Thank you for your support of Adventist World Radio. Together we are making waves from broadcast to baptism. This, this is, is AWR. AWR. 360. Aren't those amazing stories? God is working in marvelous and wonderful ways. What a joy it is to share these. This is another story. This Burmese uh, Buddhist woman, she's pictured here with Tim Saxton. He's the AWR, Asia Pacific Regional Director. She suffered at the hands of a very abusive husband. Everything came to a climax when he made her drink poison, twice in an attempt to kill the twin babies in her womb. And yet the babies survived. Both 
killing attempts. The woman then tried to kill herself by ingesting a poisonous concoction, but Lord sent someone to stop her in time. Now she has been studying the Bible and she desires to give her life to Jesus. She just attended an AWR evangelistic meeting in Thailand, across the border in Thailand, and was baptized. How incredible it must be to realize for the first time that you have a loving, protective Savior. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4 promises, For the Lord your God is He who, gives, who goes with you to fight for you for against your enemies to save you. So many people are desperate for the truth in Jesus. Another photo caption, and she's here with her sister-in-law. This time she's here with her sister-in-law, um, her husband, who also attempted, attended these meetings. A couple of nights ago, she went home and she was laying in bed. She couldn't sleep and so set her mind to thinking about Jesus. As she did so, she seemed to hear the Lord speaking to her. He asked, what would you like me to do for you? And she responded thusly, I want my husband to love me and to take care of me and our babies. Her husband had been abusive and he had told her to leave. He wouldn't care for her or even provide food. He consistently drank himself into a stupor. And after she shared this with the Lord, at, uh, what she desired, shockingly, her husband came home and laid down beside her. He then told her that he wanted to care for her and the babies, that they would keep them together and raise them together. In the morning, when she awoke, her husband gave her a present of some milk, which was unbelievable. Before he normally would not do that. The Lord seemed to speak to her again, and he said, What will you do when you find others who have been as troubled as you have been, as you were. And she responded, I will tell them to seek after you, Lord. She has been a Buddhist all her life, but now she sings the praises of Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? That's that first response. Lord, may I give back to you. Within the 1040 window, in the heart of Nazareth, you find our brand new uh, evangelistic center and radio station combined. The stories coming out of Nazareth are incredible. Like Fatima's testimony, she is from a prominent Muslim family in the West Bank. God gave her a dream about the living water that piqued her interest in discovering Jesus. Against seemingly insurmountable odds, and isn't that a, a beautiful picture of, of the Jordan River? I just love that picture. Fatima was baptized in the Jordan River a few months ago. Her family was, has repeatedly tried to arrange a marriage for her, but she refuses to marry a non-believer. Recently, her father began reading the Bible, and she has started asking him questions, which inevitably leads to a Bible study. Nothing is impossible for God. Pastor Wiesam, and you've heard his story, I believe you have. Pastor Wiesam contracted with a woman to translate AWR's Earth's Final Countdown sermons in Arabic. To better understand what she was translating, she decided to first listen to all of the Pastor McKee's presentations. As she listened more and more, she began having visions night after night where she saw Jesus calling her to follow him. You see, Pastor Dwayne McKee baptized her just this last November. Isn't that beautiful? When we inaugurated the AWR uh, radio station in Nazareth, Pastor Wiesam hired a cleaning lady. Oh, excuse me, a cleaning company. This lady, the cleaning lady, listened as she cleaned. She began having a recurring dream where she saw a big choir singing. As they sang, she saw that she was standing in the water as the light shone down on her. She only saw the vision whenever she cleaned the AWR building. And at first she didn't understand what this meant. But the more the vision was repeated, the more she wanted to know. Then one day as she cleaned, she heard one of the presenters making an appeal saying, this is the time to come to Jesus. 
She too was baptized by Pastor McKee in the Jordan River. These are beautiful stories. These, these are people that have not heard the gospel in any way prior. We cannot use her real photo or her name for this, or we cannot use his, for this incredible man. He's a Jewish Orthodox scholar and he read the great controversy. He was convicted by the Adventist beliefs and is now translating the, the Conflict of the Ages series into Hebrew for AWR, reading it online for Hebrew-speaking people around the world. In South Sudan, the local people were eager, eager to set up their radio tower. So AWR sent the needed equipment. As challenges threatened to block their goal, they became innovative. These young men foraged the jungles and chopped down trees to burn to form charcoal. Their tenacity paid off because their charcoal sales provided the materials for them to build a beautiful building for their new radio station. They have also launched into digital audio broadcasting in several countries with amazing results. Digital audio broadcasting is very strong in Europe for a very good reason. So many countries, and they all want to broadcast, so they have to um, decrease the, uh, the, the, frequency, um, uh, the frequencies down to a very um, a fine point so they don't interfere with each other's broadcasts. So digital audio broadcasting is very popular. And there's a story. Like in England, Nathan had decided he was going to commit suicide. His girlfriend, whom he had loved more than life itself, had left him in front of the man the week, just the week before, and he was devastated. He'd sought refuge in drugs and alcohol and done that to dull the pain, but peace eluded him, and he hadn't eaten or slept in days. Unable to focus on his work, he'd finally reached the conclusion that he didn't want to live anymore. Getting into his car, he sped at 120 miles an hour up a mountainside, intent on careening over the edge in a, in a break span, <laughs> breakneck speed. The radio was blaring and heavy metal music and the din matching the turmoil in his mind. Suddenly, the radio went dead. It went dead. Silence filled the car. This made Nathan furious, you see, and he banged on the dashboard to get it to come back on. At first, nothing happened. And as his frustration mounted and exasperation he gave it, the radio went final bang, and that's when he heard it come back on. But it was not on the station that he was listening to. It was Adventist World Radio, and a man was speaking about peace and hope in Christ. Nathan was so shocked that he stopped the car and he stared at the radio. He sat there listening to the entire message, a sermon on the hope that seemed to be meant just for him. At the end of the message, a phone number was given and Nathan called it. How can I help you? A kind voice answered. I need help. I need love. I need Christ, Nathan managed to say. He was immediately put in contact with one of the local Adventist pastors. John Melky was his name. And Nathan's spiritual journey began. As he studied with Pastor Melky, he felt a deep sense of gratitude at what God had done for him. His suicidal thoughts vanished, and at the end of the studies, he was baptized into the Chelmsford Adventist Church, just north of London. Now he works as a pro on a project for the homeless in his city, leading them to Christ and to a better life. Amen. Now let's tra uh, travel to Livingston, Africa, where AWR just concluded a series of evangelistic campaigns in eight different sites in that town. One evening on the Hillcrest SDA Church, President McKee preached. Uh, his preaching turned to <laughs> shouts of hallelujah and praise God from the audience. This was because more than 20 sex workers surrendered their lives to Jesus as their savior. Their testimonies were horrifying, but they expressed their resolve and desire for a new start. And Sharon and I have a personal interest in this particular church because we too took training there in Zambia back in 2018. It's a beautiful church and it's 
And I, it's so nice to see it filled with, with wonderful people. We had one of 20 sites in that particular time. It's good to see Hillcrest Church again. As the end approaches, the testimonies of God's servants will become more decided and more powerful. As we close, I wanna share a trilogy of miracles that testify how God's timing is perfect. Meet Raina. Enticed and allured by city life, she leaves her village home with a backpack. A businessman observed that she was overwhelmed and vulnerable. He promised her everything she wanted to hear, but Raina's perfect dream quickly turned into a terrifying nightmare. Isolated in a room, he paid her with a radio instead of money for food. This turned out to be her saving grace. She found comfort in AWR's message of a savior who accepts all who come to him. She planned her escape and was baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church as her refuge. God's timing is perfect. Meet Reuben. Hit by a bus, his life was turned upside down. While hospitalized for months, he lost everything, including hope. Filled with despair, he returned home in a wheelchair. The depths of depression took him to the kitchen knife drawer. He drew the knife and was about to take his life when the radio suddenly changed stations. Peace overcame him as he heard the first test broadcast of the new AWR station. This began Reuben's journey to being baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. God's timing is perfect. Meet Trisha May. At a young age, her parents traded her for drug money to an old man. She learned to fear him. As Trisha grew older, his control of her dominated all her emotions. She was always in a constant state of dread, for even the littlest mistakes resulted in pain. Trisha became intrigued by the neighbor's radio. The sound of peaceful music filled her with hope. Our AWR broadcaster received her call pleading for help. Immediately, she was rescued from her captor. Now a baptized member, she shines for God, bringing others out of darkness. God's timing is perfect. From broadcast to baptism, this is AWR 360. God is calling each one of us to have a transformation from the darkness of this world to the brightness of eternal life. Today, we have witnessed numerous transformations all around the world from all types of enslavement to sin. But let's not forget that each of us needs a transformation as well. Only God can do this, but he, we must ask because God's timing is perfect. Today is the day to recommit your life to him and to ask him to create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. That was David's prayer, wasn't it? Join me in reading, if you will. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my many transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from sin. That's Psalms 51, 1, David's prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we have witnessed a few of the many, many blessings, the many transformations that you have uh, done around the world, rescuing people from the evil of the, the, the destroyer, the evil one. Yes, Lord, we ask for that same transformation in our lives. May we follow you and may we witness for you and serve you throughout this life and eternity is our prayer in the holy and precious name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Now for closing, our closing song is the AWR theme song. It's called Airways of Love. The, the music will, uh, the words will scroll across the uh, uh, screen and we're invited to, to sing along.